Today I will be showing you two more uses for the offset function when modeling real estate investment. Now you'll recall that we would previously done a post on creating dynamic lists in Excel using the offset function. And I think as you become more comfortable with the offset function that you'll find there are infinite uses for it in your modeling. So let's go ahead and get started. First I'm going to show you how to use the offset function to identify the last 12 periods in a string of cash flows. And this would be helpful if you're wanting to, for instance, uh, identify the trailing 12 months value that would be used to arrive at your residual value. The other use is we are going to be copying a horizontal string of values, or excuse me, a vertical string of values horizontally using the offset function. So let's go, go ahead and get started. Now, here I have a string of 36 months and the associated net operating income for each of those months. And what I want to do is I want to say, what, are the, what is the sum of the last 12 months in this string? Well, the easiest way to do that, right, is just to use the sum formula or function. And we come out here to the end and we copy the last 12, right? And there we have our value. And that makes sense, and that's the easiest way. Here, here's the problem, though, with doing that. Imagine at some future time, you decide that you want to analyze out to 48 months, or perhaps out to 60 months. And you come back here, and you add the values for the additional months, but you fail to, to recall that the trailing 12 months that you are, trailing 12 month value that you are using to arrive at your residual value is still the static value based on this sum formula. And your value therefore is off. Well the beauty of the offset function in this case is it's going to, going to make this a, a dynamic formula where any changes, any additions or subtractions that you make to this string of cash flows will automatically be reflected uh, in your trailing 12 month calculation. Now in this case we're going to use the offset function coupled with the count A with which if you will recall the count A function counts uh, the number of non-empty or, or bl not blank cells in a string. We're also going to use the array function. And so I'm going to show you here how it works. So this is the formula that we're going to use. We're going to start off with offset. No, excuse me, we're going to start with sum, right? Because we're going to be summing the range. Offset, open parentheses. The first thing it asks, it asks us for is our reference cell, where we're going to reference the very first cell in this row. We're going to lock that in. Then it asks how many rows up or down do we want to move. Well, we don't want to move any rows up or down, so we're just going to go ahead and zero that. Then it asks how many cells to the right or the left do we want to move. From, and from that point is where we will start our range. Well, we want to move out, right? We want to move all to the end of the string, and then we want to come back 12 cells. So we're going to use the count A to determine how long is this string. Count A, and it's the count of the entire row, this row 4. We're going to close the parentheses. But it's right now it is taking us all the way to the end. And what we want to do is we want to go to the end, and we want to come back 12 before we count out 12. And so we're just going to go ahead and minus 12. And that now has moved our reference to the end and then come back 12. The next question is how high, how many rows high is this range? Well, it's just one row. All right, it's just this row four. And finally, how wide is this? Well, it's 12 months wide. Then we're going to close these parentheses. But before we hit enter, we need to create an array. And to do that, you're going to hold down control shift and then hit enter. And now you'll see that this formula has, has resulted in the same value as this sum formula. And so you go, okay, that was a little bit more work maybe than this one was worth. However, we're going to go ahead and we're going to add those last, we're going to add 12 more months onto this string. So we're going to go ahead here, we're going to copy out 12 more. Then we're going to go ahead and we're going to copy this one out 12 more. Okay, so now we have a 48 month analysis period. We're going to come back and let's take a look. Here we have our, our offset formula is dynamic. So now it is counting 
the the new set of 12 months that were added, where our previous formula is still stuck in that uh, third year. So let's show you here with a sum. We go this slow, and that way you can see that the formula is correct. I'm going to grab the last 12, and there we have it. The offset formula now make uh, the offset function now makes uh, this trailing 12 month calculation dynamic. Next, what we're going to do is we're going to use again the offset function to, in this case, copy a vertical string of values horizontally. Now, the easiest way to do that, right, is is to use the transpose paste function in, functionality in Excel. If you haven't used it, let me show you. So here we have an internal rate of return table, and our IRR values are vertical. What we want to do is we want to output them horizontally up top here. And there's a couple reasons why you may do that. You may have a cash flow statement that's built out horizontally, and yet you build the table in this way. And now you want to transpose these. And you don't want to do just simply equals here, and then equals here. And I recognize that you can do that. And it doesn't take that long. But there's a faster way and a more efficient way to do that. So the first is like this tramp, transpose. We come down here. We identify our values. Notice these are all formulas. We're going to go ahead and copy. Then we're going to come down over here, and we're going to paste these. But we're going to paste them special. We'll right click. We'll come to Paste Special, to Paste Special. And then we're going to check this little transpose box. And there we have it. It's transposed. If we come down here and values change, it's dynamic. And that's fine. Uh, that seems to work well. The offset function will do the same thing. And let me show you how. So we have up top here our years, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And the offset function is going to be using these values to match up with our years down here. So we go ahead and we hit offset. And our reference cell is going to be this cell, right? We're going to go ahead and lock this into place, and this is important. Lock that there. And then the question is, how many rows down do we want to go? Well, we want to go one row down so that we can come one down here. So we just go ahead and reference our year one, and we hit Enter. Oops. Uh, Oh yeah, and then it's asking how many columns over do we want to? We want to go zero columns. Now we hit enter. And there we have that. And then we just simply take this formula, we copy it to the right, and you'll notice it now matches. And you'll probably agree that the, the paste transpose was a more intuitive way to do this. But what happens if the cells that you are trying to copy are not immediately adjacent to one another? And I'll show you an example of that now. Here we have an amortization table, and we have periods that are months with ending balance at the end of each of these months, right? And we go down, and it's a 360-month amortization table. But what we have up here, we have years. And we want to ask, what is the payoff at the end of year one? What's the payoff at the end of year two, three, four, five, and so forth? And there's a couple ways that we can do this. A VLOOKUP, for instance, might be one way. But another way we can do this is with the offset function. So we go here, again, offset, open parentheses. Now this time, we're going to be referencing that cell there. We're going to lock it into place. Then we ask ourselves, how many rows down are we going to go? Well, we know we're going to go one, we, we know we are, we're going to go 12 down in this instance, but we're going to go 12 down multiplied by the number of years, right? So we're going to go ahead, and we're going to type in 12, and then we're going to multiply it We're going to multiply it by the, the year that we're in. So here we have C2, that says year 1, multiplied by 12. We're not going over any columns, and we close that. And then we just simply copy over. And this now gives us the ending balance in each of the years. And to show that here, we have year 10, 3,254. Let's come down here 
and verify that. Month 120, 3,254. So that's a very quick and easy way using the offset function to output the ending balance or the loan payoff in a given year without coming down and manually going, okay, in year one, it is this value, and in year two, it is this value, and so forth. So rather than doing it manually one by one, we're able to do it here, quick and easy, and on top of that, it's fully dynamic. So if our amortization goes from being 360 months to 240 months, the offset function is auto automatically going to see that. So there you have it, two additional ways to use the offset function when modeling real estate investments. Uh, feel free to reach out if you have any questions, and thank you very much.